close our business up. That they watch. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. 
All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. I'm glad that you are here this morning. And it is good to be in the presence of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. All right, great. Make sure, Don, make sure the overflows are on for, for back there as well. Um, what a joy it is to come together. It's an interesting time in, in the life of our community. A lot of things are on a lot of people's minds, and, and we'll share more about that and pray, pray about that uh, throughout the service. But um, we are here. To lift up the name of the Lord God. To make his name great. So let's pray and ask him to uh, open our minds and our hearts. Let's pray. Grace Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the presence of your spirit here. Lord, I thank you that you are the creator that created us. And you are the savior that, that loved rebellious people enough to live and die and rise again so that we might be with you. So Lord, I pray that, that we wouldn't just kind of go through the motions this morning. And I also pray for our hearts, because I, I know that many come in here with hearts that are angry, <laughs> myself included. Hearts that are angry, hearts that are irritated, frustrated, confused, sad. But Lord, we give you our hearts. We give you our hearts and we ask that you would speak your word to your people. We ask that you would get the glory and the honor. Pray that you would open the eyes and minds of our hearts so that we would lift up your name. We pray for those that are watching online. We pray for the technology that, that makes it possible. We thank you for it. And we ask that you would keep that strong so that others may, may participate who are not here. We give you the words that we're going to say. We give you the song that we're going to sing. We ask for your mercy upon us, and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 37, 1 through 9. So I invite you to stand. Dorothy's going to come and, and lead us. Um,
be seated. As they're um, tearing down here, praise God, I think that's the first time in a long time we've got everybody in the band together. Um, and we didn't get a chance to go through it ahead of time, so maybe we don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. Praise God for the presence of the Holy Spirit and for each one of you um, using your gifts for the Lord. I invite you to join Dorothy as she gets ready to lead us in the confession of faith on the screen. We believe that Jesus Christ, the living word, became flesh through his miraculous conception by the Holy Spirit and his virgin birth. He who is true God became a true man, united in one person forever. He died on the cross to sacrifice for our sins according to the scriptures. On the third day he rose bodily from the dead, Ascended into heaven, where at the right hand of the majesty on high, he now is our high priest and mediator. Let's take this time for silent prayer. Amazing love, how can it be that Jesus, the King, would die for me? If your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ and you confess your sins, He forgives you your sins. He is amazing love. He is amazing grace. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you are forgiven and free. But all those in Christ shout, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> I mean, it used to be warm out. What is it now? Yeah, it's not very warm, is it? Who, who's in charge of that? God. God. Well, who made you? God. And who made everything else? God. And why did he make you and everything else? For his own glory. Oh, okay. So he made you, right? And he made everything else. 
and he made you and everything else for his own glory. Can you all say it together? For, for his, his own, own glory. glory. All right, let's pray and let's remember that. Lord God, I thank you for these young men and women here. And what a blessing they are. Lord, we, we uh, understand and acknowledge that you are the one that created the world and, and you give us each day. Lord, we don't understand and, and our minds kind of bend to the limit understanding how and why these things happen, but there was a hurricane that came and we know that there was a lot of people that, that have a lot of things going on in, in their lives because of that. Uh, maybe they lost their house or maybe their church or maybe their school. So Lord, I just pray that, that you would send people that love you to come alongside them and lift them up and encourage them and point them to you and your love. And I just pray, Lord, from now till forever, that these kids up here would remember that you made them, that you made the whole world, and that you made them and the whole world for your own glory. So Lord, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, Jaden's got toys and, and treats. I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bibles, not to Philippians, but just before it, to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. I know that many of you, maybe not all of you, but many of you came in here this morning with something on your mind and heart. And that has to do with things going on in our community and specifically uh, what happened at the Southside Schools on, on Thursday. When we all learned that, that someone that many of you know as a friend, and many of you have had as a teacher, and, and many of your kids have had, uh, Mr. Casado had been um, put on the lead. And uh, there was appropriate uproar about that. Well, that was going on, and that's on the hearts and minds of many people. And the same that came out on Thursday into Friday. Friday afternoon, my wife came home and and she said, it was a terrible day today. And I said, why? And she said, I was reminded at every turn that there is a battle for the hearts and the minds of the kids of this generation. I was reminded at every turn that there's a battle for the minds and hearts of the children of this generation. So as I was praying about what to speak to all of you, with those two things kind of going on, I wanted to jump out of Philippians and go a little bit to a different location of Ephesians. It's something I've preached on many times. It's not new. But I would like us to hear it again, and I would like us to be encouraged. And I would like us to know that we have, we have an amazing resource. And that amazing resource is the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go to his word, Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18. But before we do that, let's go to him in prayer. Lord God, I thank you and praise you. And I ask that you would speak to your people this morning. Not what I have to say. Not what's in my mind, but what you have to say to your people. Wake up our minds. Wake up our hearts. I just thank you for the, the wise words of my wife. There is a battle for the minds and the hearts of the next generation every single day. And Lord, if we follow you, if we are in Christ, we're in the game. And so I pray that you would wake us up and put us in there. And that we would stand firm in you. And that you would get all the glory. And your light would reflect to this dark world. We love you, Lord. We praise you. I do pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my rock 
You are my Redeemer. Speak to your people from your word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Paul is finishing this letter to the Ephesians, and he uses the word finally, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but in this case he actually does mean finally because he is wrapping up. Hear the word of the Lord. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flame in flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the saints. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like you to get in the DeLorean with me and travel back in time 50 years. 1972. Bruce Jenner would have been training for the Olympics. Four years later, in 1976, he won the gold medal in the decathlon. I'd like you, as you spend your time back there in 1972, to imagine for just a second the reaction that you would have gotten if you said to someone, well, you know, one day, that guy will be a woman. You'll think about running for the governor of California. Imagine the laughter that would have ensued. Or imagine in 1972 saying to someone, I'd like you to come to my wedding. Oh, who's officiating it? Oh, I am. It's a self-attesting one. I got the self-attesting license. What? Imagine in 1972 saying, if you're a man, saying to someone, I'd like you to meet my husband. We're about to have a child. I'd like you to think back 50 years ago, 1972, to what you would have said to a teenager you met on the street that said, oh, I identify as a cat or a dog. A couple more. This one actually happened to me. Imagine in 1972, registering for a medical procedure, and they ask you on the phone, what is your gender? And you tell them, and the next question is, is that the same as the gender you were assigned at but we laugh about that. It's laughable. It's sad. And it's evil. It's an evil attack on the Creator God. It's an evil that makes you and I the authority, not the sovereign God. Now, friends, that evil has always been there. It's just more noticeable now. Before, we were a little bit able to say, oh, yeah, that's, that's a crazy world out there. I would submit to you it's always been a crazy world here, a sinful, dark world here. But now we can see that it's a crazy world right here. Is it any crazier than 1972? I'm willing to bet it's not. Because as we've learned in our Bible study, there's nothing new under the sun. So I'm, not, I'm willing to bet that it's not any crazier or more evil than it was 50 years ago, but we see it and we're bombarded with it all the time. And it was the same in Paul's day. And Paul, teaching the Ephesians how to live as a community of Christians, which would also go for the Philippians, 
which would also go for the Thessalonians, which would also go for us today, tells these people it's an evil, dark world out there. You're in a war, so armor up. And that's what I want you to hear today. The message that we armor up daily in Christ and seek to honor Him in the battlefields of daily life. May we armor up daily in Christ and seek to honor Him in the battles of daily life. The first thing that we have to do is understand that we're in a war. He's writing to the Ephesians, and in chapter 1 it says, to God's holy people in Ephesus. He's writing to believers. And if you read Ephesians, he goes through a lot of things. He says, you were spiritually dead, but God made you alive. Jesus has come to save you. The Holy Spirit has brought your dead heart to life. You used to be this. You're now this. And he has brought you to God. And he tells them all these other things. And he gets to verse chapter 6, verse 10. And then he says, finally. Now, we talked about that word last week. It's the same Greek word. In Philippians, it kind of meant, furthermore, I'm transitioning to a new topic. It means the same thing here, but he's actually going to wrap it up. So it does mean what we think when we hear the word finally. He says, finally, after all these things I've told you, after all these things I've told you about what Christ has done, here's the last word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Well, why does he say that? Verse 11 tells us, because the devil is scheming. And over church, Pastor Jefferson, if you're not following Christ, the devil could care less about you. If you're not following Christ, you're actually helping the devil out. There's nothing more that the devil loves than someone who claims to be a Christian, but is not serious about it. They're not taking up their cross daily and following Christ. In the world of sports, it's like they're sitting on Satan's bench. Satan doesn't care about a lukewarm person who calls themselves a Christian and shows up for worship once a year. But if you trust in Christ, if you've been born again, and you're seeking to honor him and follow him and live under his authority by his word, Paul says the devil is scheming. And he's not only scheming, he's throwing flaming darts at you. Verse 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. This was a common warfare tactic back then. You would take an arrow that's been set on fire and you would shoot it and you would hope to burn and cause all kinds of destruction. Luke Duke does it in the Duke's Passing. And I don't remember what episode, but he takes that arrow and he blows up a building. It's a fabulous explosion. Paul is saying... That's what the devil is sending your way. And he says, do not try and stand against it in your own strength. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in his mighty power. And then he says, that person that's persecuting you, they're they're not actually the real enemy. They're just a lost person doing what lost people do. We need to realize and not be surprised when non-Christians do non-Christian things. When the lost world acts like a lost world. If a person or an institution is not Christian, they're not going to act like Christians. We talked about this in Sunday school this morning. If God's word is not the base authority, then whose is? Determine reality. And you and I see this every day. Paul says they're just lost people doing what lost people do. He says, let me tell you who the real enemy is. And he lists this thing. He says, here's the real enemy, you all. Rulers, authorities, powers of darkness, spiritual forces of evil. This is really interesting because I looked these all up in the Greek. Rulers is the Greek word archaic. 
Arche is the word for beginning. And John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. But the more you learn about Greek, the more you realize that there's a range of meanings depending on context. And in certain contexts, the word arche can mean angels or demons. And in this particular context, when Paul says the real enemy is those rulers, he's saying the real enemy is those demons. Just before that is the word struggle, verse 12. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. I like some of the older translations. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's a Greek word. This is so interesting. It's a Greek word that is pronounced pale, and it literally meant the sport of wrestling. Like you can go to the high school and watch the sport of wrestling. At that time, it was a little more violent than it is for us today. Because in order to win the match, the way you pinned your opponent was to hold him down and keep your hand on his neck. That was Paul Lay wrestling at the time of the Apostle Paul. And Paul says, we struggle, we wrestle, it's up close, it's in our face. He's telling us the battle with evil is in our face, it's up close. It's not flesh and blood that are our enemies, but it's the arche, it's the demons. The next Greek word is the exousia, the authorities or evil powers. And then he says, it's the powers of darkness. That's actually two different Greek words. The first one means the devil, and the second one means ungodliness and immorality. And then finally, the fourth one is the spiritual forces of evil. I looked up that word and it said it could be defined with the word malice. He's saying flesh and blood is not their, your enemy. Behind that is demons, evil powers, the devil, ungodliness, immorality, malice of this dark world. Now the word world in the Greek is not Cosmos. Cosmos is the word God so loved the world. And I've told you before, that can mean rebellious humanity. God so loved rebellious humanity. That's not the word translated world here. It's all these things that are of this dark aeon. Of this dark age. So what Paul is saying is our battle is, is not against flesh and blood. It's against demons, the evil powers, the devil, ungodliness, immorality, the spiritual malice of this age. And brothers and sisters, he says, if you try and stand against that in your own power, you can't. Every once in a while, Hollywood gets things right. And there's some great TV series and some great movies where they depict the power of evil and how it infects absolutely everything and how you cannot stand against it. In our human strength, we cannot stand against it. And that is why Paul says, stand firm in the Lord. Stand in Him and His mighty power. Well, Pastor Jefferson, how do I do that? He tells us. He tells us. He says, you all need, as you're walking through life, together as this new body of Christ, Ephesians, Hanover Church, you need to daily walk in his armor. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. The first part of this armor is the belt of truth. Well, Jesus is the truth. He tells us that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah prophesied about the Messiah. This is in Isaiah 11, 5. Prophesying the branch, the Messiah that will come. He says, righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The one with a righteous belt 
and a faithful sash is the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Paul is saying, buckle yourself with the belt of Christ. <coughs> Be in Christ every day. And then he talks about the breastplate of righteousness. Isaiah 59 talks about the Lord stepping in to provide salvation. It says, he, the Lord, put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. Our righteousness comes from Christ. Christ is our righteousness. He said we need to put on the truth of Christ. We need to put on the righteousness of Christ, the helmet of salvation, which was paid for by the atoning sacrifice of Christ, like we talked about up at the park on our picnic. We need to put on the salvation of Christ. And then we need to have shoes that are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Philippians 4, 7 says, you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Jesus brings us peace. And Paul says, remember to put on the peace of Christ. And remember those flaming arrows that are coming at us, that the enemy is shooting? He says, take up the shield of faith with which one can extinguish, which, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Back in that day when the warfare was happening and those flaming arrows were being shot at soldiers, they would coat their wooden shield with some sort of a, a liquid substance, I'm not sure what it was, that would help the flames, and then they would douse it in water, and cover it with water, so that when it was hit by that flaming arrow, it wouldn't shoot up in fire. All saying, that's what your faith is. And your faith is not in yourself. Your faith is in Christ. And then he says in verse 17, take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow, and exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Jesus told us he is the word of God. In the Old Testament scriptures, the word of God was written about the word of God. It was written about Jesus. So how do we stand in this age of overwhelming evil? We don't. Christ does. And in Christ, you and I are covered by his truth, by his righteousness, by his peace, by his salvation, by faith in him. And we operate with the word of God. So number one, understand if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're in the game. You're in the wrestling match. It's up front. And number two, you're outmatched. But in Christ, we have victory. And then finally he says, pray. Pray. Verse 18. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So he said, pray whenever the mood strikes you, right? No, he said, pray in the Spirit, asking the Spirit, Lord, lead me in my prayers. Lead me to pray to you on all occasions, with all kinds of requests, all kinds of prayers. Lord, I'm going through this situation. Please take me through this evil. Lord, I praise you for another day. Lord, give me the words to speak to this lost person. Lord, help us. Verse 18 in the King James says it this way. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance. And supplication for all the saints. The NIV says be alert. 
The King James says, watch thereunto, watch out with all perseverance. Don't give up. Keep on praying for the saints. That goes back to what we've been talking about in Philippians. Remember in Philippians, he said, don't just look out for your own interests, look out for the interests of others. Be praying for one another all the time in every situation. Well, so what, Pastor Jefferson? Thanks for teaching us some Greek words about evil. So what is that the cool thing about being on the Lord's team is we're always in the game. We're not sitting on the bench. If we think we're sitting on the bench, we're on the enemy's bench. And he's happy to keep us there. If you're following Jesus, you're seeking him, and you want to know him, well, you're going to have the annoyance of being on the devil's way <clears throat> But don't forget there's also the, the letter to James. In the letter to James, the, the James says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And James says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Well, this, is, this war is not lost. This war is not frightening. Yes, we are on the, the, the devil's radar and it's annoying. But in this game, in this wrestling match, don't do it in your own strength because you will lose. But get armored up in Christ. Daily, seek to live in Christ, saying, Lord Jesus, cover me today. Cover me with your truth, with your righteousness, with your peace, with your salvation. Give me faith in you. Teach me to hide your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you and that I might grow in grace in the knowledge of Jesus. Get over church. Pastor Jefferson. May we armor up daily in the Lord Jesus Christ and seek to honor him in the battles of daily life. Lord, we live in a dark world that buys for the attention of each one of us, but particularly of those generations that are younger than us. And Lord, we know how powerful that battle is. And we confess that apart from you, we, we lose that battle. We fail. And that's why Paul said, don't do it in your own strength. Stand firm in Christ and the power of his strength. Lord, Paul said to the Philippians, I want to know Christ and the power of of his resurrection. So Lord, it seems like in our culture we're seeing darkness more than we have before, but it's always been there. And maybe, Lord, you're waking us up to the fact that we're in the wrestling match. And I pray that we would uh, stay in the game, so to speak. Not depending on our own strength, not depending on our own wisdom, but standing in your strength, that's asking for your wisdom, your peace. So that we're loving people in, in, in spirit and in truth that you called us. Lord, if there's anybody here today, if there's anybody watching online that, that doesn't know you in a relationship, they know about you, but they, they don't know what it is to know you in a relationship. Lord, I pray that today would be the day of salvation, that your spirit would, would bring their heart to life and that this would make sense to them and that they would turn and believe the good news. What you call them to do, repent and believe the good news. And then we understand as we do that, we're your sons, we're your daughters. And we can come to you with all of our burdens and all of our cares. Oh Lord, I know that there's many that, that have understood that relational aspect for so long. They've been walking with you. They've been seeking you. They've been living in Christ. Lord, I pray for strength and encouragement for many more days to come. Lord, I thank you and praise you that you love us. 
that you didn't leave us alone to fight evil. That you want to cover us. And you want to use us for your glory and your honor. Thank you that you love us. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We have the opportunity to respond to God's word in a, in a number of different ways. And this being the first Sunday of October, we respond by coming to his table. I believe it's also World Communion Sunday. So there are believers in Jesus coming to this table from every part of the globe. And what a joy it is that we can come to this table. That we can receive mercy and grace. That we can receive love and forgiveness. This is not Hanover Presbyterian's table. This is not the Evangelical Presbyterian Church's table. This is the Lord Jesus Christ's table. And the call is to come. To come and receive the sensible signs. The things that we can touch and taste and smell. And here, if I was pouring the juice in, these sensible signs that point us to the reality of a communion with the Creator of the universe. Just like that arrow points to the reality of Kenyon. This is our arrow. These sensible signs are our arrow, pointing to this reality of a communion with the Creator of heaven and earth. So come to this table. Repent of your sin and come to this table and receive mercy and grace. The scripture says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Let's pray. Lord, I want to take a moment for us to settle our hearts this morning, for you to settle our hearts, to be reminded that you are in control. That you love us. That you came. That we might have life. And life abundant. We thank you for your sacrifice of atonement on the cross. We thank you for connecting us through this bread and through this juice. To other believers. Here in, here in, in this area here in this country, and in your world. Lord, we thank you and praise you that you have given us this sacrament of communion. We take just a moment to be silent before you. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We come before you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I'm going to invite the uh, elders that are serving to come forward. Uh, they will pass out the bread. Please hold on to it. They will pass out the juice. Hold on to both of them. We will take them all together. <laughs>
that he was arrested, Jesus took the bread and broke it and gave thanks to God. And then he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup. So this cup is the blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. Let's stand and sing in Christ's name. concerns uh, praying for our community. So because of, of respect for Vera and her love for the Lord, I have said yes, come forward. She has something she would like to read to encourage all of us. And, hey, can somebody turn David's mic on? That's David. It's David, yeah. Look for the one that says David. <laughs> Not his guitar, Mike, his regular mic. Don will help you. We're almost there, Bear. Right. Okay. Let me, uh, if you kind of come over here. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. 
I want to say a few words and bring uh, your attention to a situation that happened this last week uh, at the Southside School. I know the Hanover Church is already talking about this and is up and running, and I thank God for that, and I thank all of you. So, if this is happening at Southside School, this is a school that we, the taxpayers, are supporting with our taxpayers. For those of you who are unaware that Darren Casado, the biology and anatomy teacher at Southside, has been suspended because he will not call girls boys and boys girls, and he will not address them by any name other than their birth name, and he will not learn the new pronouns by which they are demanded to be addressed. In addition to the gender and issue, some of the kids are identifying as trees, as moss, yes, that's right, moss, M-O-S-S. -S. And several are identifying as cats and dogs. This is lunacy, and it needs to stop now. Where are all the adults in this? My information comes from classmates and parents and children of, of the South Side. No matter what you believe about these issues, the fact is they should not be allowed to strip another American of their right to live their life of faith and to speak their mind. <clears throat> it is not hateful to refuse to learn new made-up names or pronouns or to call a boy a tree. We should not lose our right to free speech or the right to live out our religious beliefs, such as God created them male and female. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Because someone else thinks differently. Mr. Casado is being silenced and punished for standing up for his religious beliefs and his constitutional rights as an American. This has to stop. I encourage all of you to flood the school superintendent, Alan Fritz, that's A-L-A-N, Fritz, F-R-I-T-Z, with letters of support for Mr. Casado, and to demand that the South Side <clears throat> Area School District adhere to the Constitution of the United States. Mr. Casado is a well-loved teacher with nearly 30 years of teaching at South Side. Think of all the students who are missing out on their education because their teacher has been removed from the classroom. It's not fair to them. And what about the needs and the rights of the majority? If at all possible, please attend a school board meeting this Wednesday, October 5th, as a show of support for Mr. Casado for God and Country. If you think Christians shouldn't get involved in politics, look around and you observe the decay of our society, the loss of freedom, and the corruption in our government. This is what Christian silence has wrought when evil goes unchallenged. <clears throat> in closing, let me pose this question to you. Do you think Jesus Christ has an opinion as to whether or not his human connect creation can become a tree? I think he has an opinion on that. How about turning into a cat? I think he has an opinion on that too. Do you think God is saying, wow, I really got this one wrong when I made him a boy, when he's really a girl? I don't think so. And remember this, without the black robed regiments, all clergymen, Getting involved with the revolution, there would be no United States of America. It's well past that time <clears throat> that we Christians get involved. Today, it's Darren Casado. Tomorrow, it may be you who is erased. Thank you. Please go to that school board meeting. I'm willing to bet that Vera never imagined in her life 
having to say some of those things. So please pray. We will come to the yes, Tom. What time is the meeting? The school board meeting. Anybody know? Six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but pray for this whole situation. Pray that we will have wisdom. Pray that we will get all the facts and have have correct information. I know that this happens. I was at a pastor's conference last May and a guy from Indiana, a pastor from Indiana, asked if uh, we were putting litter boxes in the restrooms for the kids that identify as cats because that was happening in Indiana schools and a pastor from Mansfield, Ohio said it's happening in our school too. That's a failure of leadership on many levels. But we need to pray. We need to pray for that poor student that thinks they're a cat. We need to pray for the parents that in my experience, don't go out, Pastor Jefferson said, in my experience with students at our own school, there's so many kids hurting who don't have parents, who don't have anyone to guide them. And they do what the law school does. So may we pray for those that are lost to know Christ. May we pray for those like Darren that stand up. May we pray for this whole mess. What else can we pray for or praise God for this morning? Uh, my brother-in-law Lloyd had his third uh, laser treatment on his brain cancer. I haven't heard anything yet as to what the outcome was. Uh, I'll find that out today, but um, just praise for the doctors and God for praise God for giving the doctors the wisdom to know how to do this type of surgery and for Lloyd that he recovers. Your brother-in-law, yeah. Lloyd, going through laser treatment for brain cancer. Wow. Please pray for the best way. Um, Barbara Rupert, um, I said with her yesterday, she needs to have, she's having um, brain surgery, probably in the middle of November. Um, her husband, Bob, fell last week and broke three ribs, and he's in rehab, and, um, and she said she had a lot. Um, we do pray for both of them. Um, Barb is also trying to start up the... Um, Kids Bible Club, which there's an announcement about. So um, I said that I would help her. So if you would pray for us all to be able to do that, but um, for Bob's health, uh, for him to be able to return home, and for all the issues that she's having, and for um, you know, a, a good su um, surgery and recovery. In case you couldn't hear back there, just please pray hard for Barb Rupert and Bob, who's currently going through some rehab after falling, and Barb going to be having uh, basically a, a new plate put in her head soon. Uh, Don. Yeah, I want to pray for the people that <clears throat> were suffering because of the hurricane in Florida, and I want to thank the Lord God Almighty for sparing my son Michael on his wife had it. Amen. It came into the land about 150 miles south. 150 miles south of Michael. Praise the Lord for that. You can pray for those that are sick. I, my wife is home, not feeling good at all. So if you could pray for those that are fighting head colds and sinuses and all that fun stuff that fall brings with it. All right, let's go to the Lord and pray today. <laughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. As Vera has reminded us that we live in the freest nation that has ever existed on the, the planet Earth. As far as being allowed to, to sort of do what we want. And thank you for that. But freedom has to be within certain bounds. 
And so we just pray for your mercy on the situation in our community. We pray for our friend Darren Casado, Lord. We ask for you to, to give him peace and joy. And I thank you for him and the heart that you have given him. That in all my talks with him ever, he just wants you to get the glory. And he's an encourager. So I thank you for that. And I pray that you would encourage him. We thank you for our connection to him through sin. We thank you for the ministry of the preschool. And we ask, Lord, that you would... Um, be with her during this time that has to be so stressful on her. Lord, we lift her up and ask for your mercy upon her. We thank you for those that help out in the preschool in different ways in the preschool board. Lord, we thank you for our deacons. We thank you for our elders. We thank you for the, the ministries that we're able to do both in these walls and in cooperation with other churches. And we particularly lift up the Bible Kids Club at Mill Creek. And Lord, we ask that you would provide in every way so that those elementary students might hear your word and might grow closer to you and might receive the love of Christ that maybe they don't see anywhere else. We pray for Barb and Bob. We pray for Lloyd. We rejoice that we've been praying for Sam. Kathy has been lifting him up, a teenage boy that was in an accident. And Lord, he's at home, and we praise you for that. And we ask that you would continue to heal him. We thank you for keeping Michael and Heather safe. And Lord, at the same time, we recognize that there was all kinds of destruction. So be with those that are called to move into that situation and encourage and, and point people to you. Lord, I pray for Penny as she continues to, to battle cancer. I lift her up to you and ask for your mercy upon her. Thank you for her perseverance. Lord, we pray for Mitzi. We pray for Betty. We pray for those that are, are, are battling colds and sinuses and, and stuffed up noses and sicknesses and COVID and other things that are going around. Lord, I pray for those things that we didn't mention out loud. Those things that are on our hearts. Those loved ones that are on our hearts for healing. For them to know you as their Lord and Savior. For our friends to know that. For our family and those we love. Give us your wisdom. Give wisdom to the leaders. In schools, in the state. Give wisdom and courage and joy. Please be with those who serve our country. And thank you for them. We love you, Lord. We praise you. And we come together with one voice praying the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We respond to God's word by giving of our time, our abilities, and the resources he's given us in the first place. So I'd invite the ushers to come forward and receive the tithes and offerings given to you. Thank you. 
gifts that have been given. I pray that you would provide for every need of your people. Lord, I, I pray that the message of Jesus might go out throughout Hanover Township, throughout your world, and that you might get all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you to look at a, a long list there, but we'll go through quickly. Deacons are meeting after the service. Um, the preschool board meeting has actually been moved to Thursday at 5 still, um, so that those of you can go to that uh, Southside School Board meeting. And please, if you can, do that. Um, praise team, well, I guess we should talk about that. Praise team is supposed to meet, but that might not happen either. Why don't we just reschedule that for the following week? All right, we'll go, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll reschedule the following week. Um, Lord will. So, praise team as well. Um, our next October, our next October worship service at Lakeview is on the 16th at 3 p.m. You can see Community Prayer Night will be on the 23rd. And then there are some things that we need you to help out and sign up for. Beth, do you want to say anything about the ladle? Uh, yes, we're going to be serving at the ladle. And for those of you who don't know what the ladle is, it's a soup kitchen in Ambridge. And twice a year, our church prepares meals and serves the people there. It's at St. John. Um, everything's on that. I think everything's on this announcement. But it's at St. John's Lutheran Church in Ambridge. Um, and we prepare for 100 meals. So there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board out by the kitchen. So if you'd like to do that, please uh, carefully consider how you can help us. All right, so there's a sign-up sheet for the lady. There's also a sign-up sheet out there for the Kids Bible Club. Last year, you all did a great job of saying, I can help on this Wednesday, or I can help on this Wednesday. And by help, I mean be at Mill Creek Church, help prepare um, a snack, and we call it a snack, but it's, it's almost like a, a late dinner for the kids. Um, some of you even helped to go get the kids from Mill Creek and bring them over. Uh, it would be the commitment would be roughly from like 2:30 p.m. until about 3:30 or 4. Um, the Wednesdays that are listed there in your bulletin. So if you can help, please sign up so that we know. And once we get closer, we'll coordinate what are we going to serve them, how are we going to do it each each week. The third thing for you to sign up on out there is for the annual hayride. And that is planned for, Lord willing, weather permitting, October 22nd at 5.30 p.m. So there's a sign up to say, I'm coming and I'm bringing 10 of my relatives. Um, and then there's a sign up to say, uh, I would bring marshmallows or I would bring chocolate for the s'mores. Um, there's all the different things that we need that are out there. So sign up for the hayride. Sign up if you would help with Kids Bible Club. Sign up if you would help for the label. I missed any signs. Preschool pals. Preschool pals. I did. Preschool pals. Yes, we have a few on the list, but we could use, I believe, 17 of them this year. Um, and, and that is saying, I will pray for this particular, this is our four-year-old class. Uh, I will pray for this uh, student. I will find out when their birthday is and send. And we'll, we'll give you that information. Send them a birthday card. Um, there's several different maybe times throughout the preschool year where Mrs. Casado will say, Pre-K pals, you're invited to come and join with us on this. Um, it's a neat experience, I think, for everyone that's ever been involved. So that you can sign up for as well. Any other sign-ups on this? Okay, any other announcements on this? All right. Our closing song this morning Again, the, the battle is not just here in this, this little community. The battle is worldwide. And in Christ, we are victorious. He is our all in all. Let's stand and sing praise. <laughs>
here going, man, Pastor Jefferson just painted this dark picture and, and evil is so pervasive and, and, and there's nothing I can do about it. There isn't. But there is someone that did do something about it. And that is the Lord Jesus. So as you seek him and as you are in him, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be filled with him. And share his love and his light as you armor up every day and, and go in his peace and his righteousness. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Have a peace.